Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my tutorial on linked lists and how they are used with Java. We're going to cover how to make them, how to change them, how to search through them, and a whole bunch of other things. And I'm going to present this in numerous different ways, so by the end of the tutorial, you will completely understand linked lists. So let's get into it. So what is a linked list? Well, first, what you have to understand is a link is just simply an object. And each link that you create has a reference to another link in the list. And the linked list is just another class, and it has only one reference to one of the links in the linked list, and that is the last link that was added. So let's look at this in pictures to make more sense of that. Basically, this is all that's to it, what you see here on the screen. You have one guy right here, and his name is linked list and he is just a simple object and in regards to all of the links in the linked list he only has the address for the newest guy in town or the last link that was added to the list that guy is going to be named first link and he is going to be saved inside of a field inside of linked list first link is just a link and he has the address for the guy that moved in before him that is it he doesn't know about any of the other links and the guy that moved in before him is going to be named next and then next is going to have another reference to the guy that moved in before him to the list and so forth and so on so if the linked list class wants to get a hold of next over here, he needs to contact first link and say, hey, what was the guy's name or the address of the guy that moved into town before you? And he will be able to provide it to the linked list. And that is how they are structured. So let's start building some links and then some linked lists and make this all clear. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a linked list group of books, popular books. So I'm going to have book name, and I'm setting this for public so I don't have to worry about getters and setters and all that stuff. Then I'm going to have millions sold. So each link that we create is going to have a book name and the millions of those books that were sold. Then what do I need to do? Well, I need to reference the next link in the linked list. And like you saw before, that guy, of course, is going to be a link and its name is going to be next, just like we saw previously. Then, just simply, I'm going to create a constructor here, the million sold, and then assign the book name and the millions of books sold. And there we are. Like I said, linked lists are confusing only because they're a little bit weird. But once you understand that previous frame that I just showed you, they're not that hard. Okay, well then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in display. And all display is going to do is provide us a little bit of information on our books, which are our links. So that's going to put out the book name, the millions of books sold, and there we are. So that's all display is going to do. I mean, technically, we did pretty much everything we needed to do with linked list, just having data inside of it and having next. Because remember, all the links know is the address of the previous link that was added to our linked list. So then, just to help things along, I'm going to also put toString in here. And whenever toString is called, it is going to return whatever the book's name is. And that's it. Link is done. Don't need to do anything more with it. So now what we need to do is come in and define the guy that knows about the last guy to move into town. Like we said before, his name is Link List. And like you saw before, the last guy to move into town, his name is First Link. And this is just a reference to the first link in the list. Or the last link that was added to the linked list. Now we're just going to go Link List. And I'm going to put in null here. I don't really need to do it, but I'm just doing it here to show that the first link always starts as a null value when you create a linked list. So that's the only reason it's in there. Of course, we all know that by default, objects get a value of null. Then, if I want to check if my linked list is empty, all I'm going to need to do is check if first link is equal to null. If it is, that means that nobody has moved into town yet. So now let's take a quick look at how to insert a new link into a linked list. To insert a new link into our linked list, a new link needs to be created. It's next 
field is going to be assigned to the reference to the previous link that was created, and the linked list's first link field is assigned a reference to the newest link added. Let's take a look at that as pictures. So we're going to create ourselves a new link that we want to add to our linked list. We're going to take the value of first link that is in the linked list, store that inside of next, and then store a reference to link as the value or reference in the field named first link. All this stuff just moves to the right. That's all it does. Remember, linked list knows about the newest guy that moves into town, and the newest guy that moves into town is named first link. And then the previous guy that moves into town is going to be moved over here and stored in the field for next. So let's build that in code. So we're gonna go public void insert first link. And this is just going to be a string again. Let me just grab that. So it's going to be book name and million sold. Don't like to type if I don't have to. And all the code that is here is available in a link underneath the video. And then we're going to go new. We're going to create a new link because a new guy just moved into town. And we're going to assign his name and how many books he sold. So there we go. We created a new link, just like I said before. Now I just need to connect the first link field that is stored inside of the linked list to the new link. So I go new link. Next, you now know the address for the guy that moved into town previously to you and that is stored inside of next and then I just go first link is now equal to the last guy to move into town and that's all I do and I just added that guy into our linked list so now let's look at how to remove the very last guy that moved into town to remove the last guy that moved into town the linked lists first link field is just simply going to be assigned the value of the current first links value for next that is it let's look at that in pictures so if we want to remove this guy right here, well, first link has a reference to this link here stored inside a first link. If we want to remove this link altogether, we just take the reference right here, which is a reference to this link, move it over here and store it inside a first link, and this disappears. Let's look at that in code. So we're just going to go public link. It's going to remove or send back or return the link that was removed. That's why that's in there. So then I'm going to just go in here and go link reference is going to be equal to first link. And just remember, first link is this guy right here. We're doing all this coding inside of our linked list that we created. So that's first link, reference to the last guy that moved into town. Now, just to be nice, we're going to say, is the town empty? And if it isn't, we're going to remove the link from our list by going, hey, first link, what was the guy's name that moved into town before you did? I want to get that because you're going to get evicted and I always need to know about the last guy that moved into town. And that's exactly what you just did. Else, we're going to say empty linked list. And then remember, we said that we want to return this guy right here, the guy that was deleted, if it was deleted. And there you go right there. So how do we cycle through a linked list? Very simple. All we need to do to cycle through a list of links is start at the reference stored in first link. Remember, link list knows about the last guy to move into town. So in essence, we're going to be cycling through first the last guy to move into town, and then the guy that moved into town previous to that, and then the guy that moved into town previous to that. So we just start at the reference stored in first link inside the linked list object, and then we get the references stored in next for every link until next returns a value for null. This is what it looks like in pictures. We say, hey, first link, who's the last guy that moved into town? It provides that answer. Then it goes to, hey, the last guy to move into town. What was the guy's name or address that moved into town before you? Oh, I have that stored in next. Then he gives it to him. Then we come over to this guy. We say, who's the guy that moved into town before you? And he says, nobody. I am the very first person to move into town. Well, in that situation, next is going to have a value of null, which means we're at the end of the list and we are done cycling through because we have gone through every neighbor in the neighborhood. Let's look at that in code. So in this situation, we're just going to display everything just like we did previously. And since we're displaying everything, we don't need to return anything because there's no point in that. So we're going to say link. And we're just going to say the link is equal to first link, which is the last guy to move into town. And then we're going to create ourselves a while loop. And it's going to say, while the link is not equal to null, meaning that we got to the last person in the neighborhood, we're just going to keep getting references stored next for every link until we get to null. And then we're going to go the link 
dot display, which is a reference to display inside of link, which is this guy right here. It's going to just print out the book name and the million sold. And then let's say we also want to print out the next link value that is stored in each one of these books. To do that, we're just going to go the link next. See, that's the reason why I didn't want to use getters and setters and confuse everything. Then what I'm going to do is say, okay, well, the current, the link, we want to get the address for the next guy we want to look at in town and just get the value of next for that. And then I'm just going to throw a new line in there. So how exactly are we going to be able to find a link in a linked list? Well, we're going to check the data for the first link reference stored in the linked list and see if it matches what we're looking for. And if you don't get a match, continue searching every reference stored inside of each object's value for next until next returns null, which means we got to the end of the list of links. Or in other words, we're going to say, hey, first link inside a linked list, do you match what we're looking for? If the answer is no, we're going to jump over here and say, do you match? If the answer is no, we're going to come over here and say, do you match? And if the answer is no, we're going to say there's nobody else in the list, which means null, and we're going to pass back that there were no matches. But of course, if there was a match, we're just going to return the match. So let's write up all the code for this. We're going to go, we're going to be returning a link, just like you saw. And let's say we're going to be searching for book name, or you could reference this as a key or whatever you wanted to do. And then the link is going to be set at the beginning as first link. Of course, we're going to check to make sure that it's not empty. And if it isn't empty, we're going to continue searching as long as book name is not equal to the book name that we are searching for. And of course, put that in brackets. We're also going to check if we're at the end of our linked list. And how do we know we're at the end of our linked list? Well, next is going to return a value of null. And if it returns a value of null, that means we got to the end of the list without finding a match. And we're just going to kick ourselves out of this method by returning null. Else, we're going to get here if we found a matching link inside the linked list. We're going to assign the link is going to be equal to the reference inside of next. And then we're going to bounce down here and do an else. And we're going to say empty linked list. Print that out on the screen. Otherwise, we know we got a link or a match and we are going to return it. So how are we going to remove a specific link? Well, this looks a little bit more complicated, but don't worry about it. What we're going to do is we're going to cycle through all the links until there is a match. You already know how to do that. If the referenced link stored in linked lists first link matches, we're going to store the reference next inside a first link as the value for first link or the reference. And if a match occurs elsewhere, we're just going to find the link that's next equals the reference and remove it. Then we have to get the reference name next in the link to remove and assign it to the link above. Let's look at that in pictures. So if we find a match for what we want to remove inside of first link, what we're going to do is we're just going to say, okay, first links next. This guy right here, this reference, we're just going to store that as the value of first link and this is going to be deleted. Or this guy right here is going to be deleted. So we're in essence just going to move this guy over to here. Assign the reference in next to first link. If, however, another link matches other than first link, so if we want to get rid of this guy, we're just going to take whatever the value of next is right here and move it over into this link. And this will disappear. So let's look at that in code. So we're just going to go public. We're going to return the link that matches or that we removed if we find one anyway, string, and we're going to be removing based off of whatever the book's name is. And here we're going to take the current link that we're working with, and it's going to be first link because that is where all of our searching is going to begin. And then we're going to go previous link. And because there is no previous link for first link, we're going to store first link inside of there. Then we need to keep searching as long as a match isn't made. So we're going to have to create a while loop and we're going to be searching for book name. We're going to be searching while we don't find a match. And then pretty much the same sort of thing is going to go on here. We're going to check if we're at the last link inside the linked list, which means there's nowhere else to search like that. And we're going to come to the conclusion that the book name was not found. In that situation, we're going to jump out of this method altogether by going return null. Else, we'll know that we already checked here. So we need to look in the next link inside of our linked list. So we're going to take whatever the current link is, assign it to previous because we have to look in the next one. And then to get the new current link, we're going to go current link, 
next. And that's going to get us the next guy in the neighborhood that we want to search for. And that's going to be current link. There we go. Then down here, if current link is equal to first link, remember there were two different ways of solving this. One, if we got a match for the first link, and one, if we got a match that wasn't in the first link. We're going to handle the first link first, because if we get here, that basically just means there was a match in the reference stored in first link inside of linked list. So it's very easy to remove an item. All we need to do is assign next to first link. So we're going to go first link is equal to first link next. And there we are, we're done. We just removed it. Else, that means we got a match in a link other than the very first link. And if that happened, we're going to go previous link next is equal to current link next like that and then of course since we want to return whatever was deleted we're going to return current link so let's save that let's jump up here inside of main and start executing some stuff now the very first thing that we're going to have to do inside of this is create a new linked list new linked list is equal to new link list and then if we want to insert new links or new books that's real easy we already did that insert first link because that's what we're going to be doing and let's just put a book inside of here and then change this into a 500 million and then we'll throw a couple more books inside of there okay so that's how easy it's going to be able to add links to our linked list now if we want to display our linked list quite easy just go display ba -da 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 -da, and execute and you can see that it is going to be outputting them in the reverse order of how they were put in and you also see that Don Quixote here, its next link is null. That means it's at the end of the linked list. And Harry Potter in this situation is going to be the value of first link, this guy right here, for the first link, because he was added last. And then if we want to remove the last item that was added, we're just going to remove first which is going to be Harry Potter. So let's just cut that out of there, paste that in there, and you'll see Harry Potter doesn't show up anymore. If we want to search for, say, Lord of the Rings, we're just going to go the linked list and do a find on the Lord of the Rings in this situation. And then if we want to have it output book name, just do that. And then we could say something like was found, boom, and there you see, Lord of the Rings was found. And then if we wanted to come in here and remove a specific book, we're just going to go remove link. And just to save some time, I'm just going to come in here and do the Lord of the Rings. Since we found it, we know it's in there. And in this situation, I'm just going to cut that out of there, paste that in, execute. And now you see Lord of the Rings was found, but it isn't being printed out because we deleted it. And also remember the reason why Harry Potter isn't getting printed out is because we said remove first. And that is basically all I'm going to cover about linked lists. I hope you completely understand those basics because everything builds from there. If you don't, leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.